It lies there, peaceful, docile, quiescent, yet aware of the dawning day. Chipper crooning birds take flight, filling the still air with harmonic melodies. Their musical sounds echo in the vineyards and orchards, bouncing between the hills that shadow the fields and crops. The vast sky painted by the sun's long fingers reflects her iridescence, giving it a pink, peach and orange blush. The sun's radiant glow animates the valley as she stretches further and further west, climbing ever higher into the sky. Yet, despite the fast ascent of the warming sun, the day is still young, the morning still fresh, and the air still bitterly cold. Like an untamed wolf, the chilling wind snaps at people's exposed flesh, gnawing it down to the bone with its icy teeth. Numbingly, the mist hugging the ground is barely noticeable to the inhabitants of the grass forest. In the few small hectares of land the lonely house is situated upon, countless insects go about their business, oblivious to the early morning excitement and beauty. They focus simply on the task ahead, ants darting in single file lines in all directions, bees whizzing about finding flowers containing their golden substance, pollen. And still centric to the stunning, the busy and the oblivious, the ancient house remains fixed in place, rooted to the ground, its planks askew, its paint chipping, and yet, with the bright aura of daybreak, it seems almost appealing standing in solitude. That was then. Now everything has changed. The melodic music of songbirds has been replaced by the subdued humming of crickets and the buzzing of cicadas. The pale sky replaced by a mask of darkness like a cloak laid across the valleys, over the hills, and along the surface of glassy waters. This dusk carries a dark beauty, casting the whole valley and everything in it as no more than silhouettes. There are no obeds anymore, no bright sun. Instead, innumerable stars scattered across the galaxies glow dimly, providing little to no light but giving the Earth's inhabitants a taster of the world beyond theirs, quiet and tranquil. No longer visible are the bent boards or the peeling paint in the dark cloud of night. This is just another mundane night out at Ormond. So down the road, through the bush and the brambles, and across the grass it's perched, vacantly watching as the days come and go and the nights pass. Peaceful, docile, quiescent. It rests alone, devoid of any real purpose. An old, lonely house, worn by weather, worn by time.